All right, so what I wanna do here is I would just wanna take a second to find the moment at a given point here, so like point A, for example, due to a force, well, this force is gonna be, you know, P, right? So in this case, right, we know that a moment just equals a force times a distance. And, and of course, the, that's kind of an easy equation to plug in once you know, well, what the force and what the distance are, right? So in this case, what we want to know is, you know, a force in a perpendicular distance, the shortest distance between that force in the point. So whenever you have forces in an angle, I kind of like to, you know, look at these in terms of the components. So, you know, we might have a component PX, we might have a component, you know, PY, right? And when we do that, it sort of makes the moment function a little bit simpler where we know the perpendicular distance is the same as the vertical distance. So, you know, this vertical distance we're gonna call, like let's say six feet. Okay, so if that vertical distance is six feet, that's gonna be the distance to the line of action of, you know, PX and point A. So here's the line of action of PX, here's point A, and that's gonna be our moment. You'll notice that PY acts, the line of action of PY is straight through point A, and there is no moment due to PY. So that's one advantage of taking components here, right? So you might say, that looks pretty easy, you know, let's do MA times PX. Well, what's PX? PX is gonna be P times the cosine of 30 degrees, right? So this is our force, and our distance is just gonna be, you know, times six feet. So when we do this out, we solve for the moment at A equals, well, 51.96 kip feet, you know, due to this force. Okay, so that looks pretty good pretty happy with it, we're good with our components, and it all makes sense. Okay, well, in some cases, it makes sense also to apply this, you know, force at some other point, right? And, and maybe it doesn't make sense, but like, let's say, for example, we had a truss that looks, well, let's, let's say it looks something like this. So we're doing Methodist sections, and we have a truss where we have a, uh, you know, it looks maybe something like this, and we have some different forces on it, right? So we, we know we have some force here, you know, maybe we have a force here that we want, a force here that we want, and a force here that we're trying to solve for. So this is our method of sections, this is our section. Well, you'll see that these forces, right, these two forces, come down and you know intersect at a point kind of down here. So if we're to sum moments about that point, well, where is a good place to you know put this force? And this force can be applied anywhere along its line of action, right? So if this is the line of action, one of the things that I like to think about is, well, what if we put this force, you know, all the way down here and applied it, you know, down here? Well, that becomes useful in the sense that, you know, now instead of having, you know, to deal with two components and two moment arms, because neither of those pass through point A, or the, the point down here that we're taking moments about, well, now, you know, if we do this, you'll notice that, you know, this force is gonna pass right through this point that we would wanna take moments about. So we can translate this force along this line of action and still have the same moment. So let's prove it. So I'm just gonna erase this real quick and take a look at you know what this looks like on another level. So let's just redraw it. And now in addition, we're gonna draw this line of action of the force, right? So if this is our line of action, right? What that means is we can apply, apply this force, force P at any point along its line of action and it still should cause the same moment about point A. So we could apply it you know, down here, right, where you know the X component now is gonna cancel out, right, or not, not even cancel out, it's not gonna apply a moment about point A down here, right, but the, the Y component will. We could also apply it you know, at some point here, right, where this is now the perpendicular distance or the shortest distance between the force and the point, right? So if this is, you know, point A, we could apply this at some other point here, right? So let's label these, you know, these these distances. Let's say, well, the distance, the shortest distance, you know, the perpendicular distance, let's call this, you know, little a, and let's call this distance here between, you know, the force and point A, let's just call that, you know, x. So we could use trigonometry real quick just to solve what each of those are. So if we know this is 30 degrees, we know this is 30 degrees, and what we're trying to show is that we could place this force p, again, we can for place this force p anywhere along its line of action and still get the same moment about point A. All we need to know is the force and the distance, right? And we'll get the same moment. So let's first solve for A, then we'll solve for X, then we'll solve for the moment, you know, and see what we get. So to solve for A, what we need to do is we need to look at, you know, we have a right triangle here. 
And we need to see, well, if this is A, this is kind of an adjacent. In, in six, we have a hypotenuse here. So let's just take a look at the cosine of 30. And that's gonna equal adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, is six feet. So what that gives us is it gives us A equals six cos 30, or A is gonna equal 5.196. Okay, so in this case, let's just take a look at that first. So if we take the moment at A, you know, due to P at a distance of A away, so now we're gonna say, well, instead of P cosine 30, we're just gonna say the moment at A equals P times A, right, a force times a distance, which is gonna equal what? It's gonna equal 10 kips times 5.196 feet. And hopefully you don't need a calculator, you can do that in your head, but what we get is MA is gonna equal you know 51.96 kip feet, just like what we got before. Right, so we applied it at a completely different point. We you know 10 times 5.196 is definitely different than 8.66 times three, or, you know, times six, right? They're definitely different, but we get the same answer, right? And what we can prove here, hopefully you're catching on, is that, you know, down at this point, right, we can do the same thing. We just need to know the dis this distance x. And in some cases, like with trusses, you'll know this distance x already. So applying this force here really isn't any extra work. And it's actually, in some ways, even easier at times. So let's take a look here, and let's take a look at P, but first we need X. So to solve for X, we can say what? Well, we can say that this looks like a new right triangle, right? This big right triangle where X is the adjacent and six is the opposite. So that sounds a lot like a tangent function to me. So tan 30 has to equal what? Six, you know, opposite over adjacent X. So that gives us, what does it give us? It gives us X is gonna be, you know, six divided by tan 30, where x is gonna equal uh, 10.3923 feet. Okay, so keeping a lot of decimal points there, but just to prove a point, right? Because now when we take our moment about a, you know, due to this location, right? So we have p applied down at the horizontal plane. What we're gonna get is we're gonna get, the only thing that causes a moment here is py, right, times what, times x, right? vertical force, horizontal moment arm. Okay, so what does this equal? Well, PY is gonna be P times the sine of 30 times X, which is 10.3923 feet. And if we do P sine 30, well, sine 30 is a half, so what we get is we're just gonna be five kips times our 10.3923 feet, and MA is gonna come out to 51.96 kip feet. So again, this is this becomes super useful when we're solving, you know, using the method of sections. Because now you can look and you can look at a force and you can apply it anywhere along its line of action. It has to be, you know, parallel through its line of action as long as you get, you know, these components. We could even, you know, uh, do some point out here if it was convenient for some reason. Let's say, you know, we already knew, you know, what these dimensions were. You know, if we already knew like, you know, x1 and y1, if we already knew those dimensions, that might be a convenient place for some reason, right? So again, the idea here is you can apply that moment anywhere you want as long as it's on its line of action and you're gonna get the same moment every time. So hey, hope this helps. Until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward. I'll talk to you soon.